had a briefing, we had a meeting, and uh, we are going to issue a statement. Uh, the president will lead us in that process. So what is clear is that uh, we have seen scenes and uh, circumstances of extreme brutality uh, by the police, uh, especially against the uh, ordinary people, the uh, citizens, uh, some of whom we intended to actually address and uh, advise on the latest development. But we were not given that opportunity because they did not allow people to congregate. They wouldn't want people to assemble. In fact, our organizing department in the morning were trying to get people to come together, but uh, they were not permitted because we wanted to have an opportunity to give people the way forward and the direction in terms of the uh, next course of action. So you have seen, and I'm sure you have heard what has happened, that we've had over 80 people arrested, uh, 20 in Kambuzuma, uh, about 20 uh, at Coca-Cola <coughs> corner, then about 15 at uh, St. Mary's. We also had about 20 from Norton, but the number is still uh, uh, you know, increasing because we are recording uh, the information as it is uh, coming. We've also received reports of some seven serious assaults, particularly on account of brutality uh, of uh, the police, uh, especially in the city center. Also head of uh, journalists who was uh, uh, assaulted. Uh, journalists were also abused uh, on account of the tear gas. I'm sure you bear testimony to that. Uh, of those cases that were recorded, one of them is very severe. A woman whose circumstances we are not very clear about. Uh, because she was severely assaulted and we don't know if she's still okay because she was taken by the police uh, through Red Cross and we're here to ascertain uh, <coughs> her condition. We've also received cases of abductions uh, since Tuesday. In fact, 10 of them were recorded on Tuesday, 4 on Wednesday, then 4 last night, making it a total of about 18. That tells you the magnitude uh, of the challenges that we are facing particularly when one looks at the police brutality. Uh, so that is the situation. And of course, uh, the police banned our demonstration. Uh, what is clear is that uh, it's turning out that um, the regime in Harare is far worse than the Mugabe regime. Uh, one would be persuaded to think that Mugabe is back, but you then realize that this is not Mugabe even it is uh, best. Uh, Mugabe has become a toddler when it comes to the kind of brutality that we are seeing. Uh, this, in terms of uh, just the magnitude of uh, abuse and heavy-endedness, tells you that it's a big problem. Any legal fees who don't afford uh, medical bills, I'm one of the people who are today. Sure. Zimbabwe is not open for democracy. Zimbabwe is not open for justice. Zimbabwe is not open for constitutionalism and rule of law. And more importantly, Zimbabwe is not open for business. It's so clear it is known not only to have an illegitimate regime in this country, <coughs> we have a rogue regime because you can't have a constitutional order where a government chooses to deploy armed people against its own civilians. Brief you, but we are continuing. We are not shutting down, we are continuing. So we are not breaking down. And we are going to pursue every avenue. There is not going to be any rest until the people of Zimbabwe achieve a people's government. A people's government is only going to be a creature of a settlement that has to come through comprehensive reforms, through a transitional mechanism, through understanding that the roadmap that we have put on the, on the, on the table is followed. Madusura is yet an